All right, so today we have a 25-inch Hantarex Polo, and this particular chassis has an arcing flyback. Now, what's interesting about this is that someone tried to repair it, not in the best of ways. <laughs> I don't know if they weren't aware that you can get a replacement flyback or really what was going on, but let me show you exactly what they did here. This thing is nasty and filthy and all original, original caps, everything. No one's touched it since it left the factory. Uh, and it sat inside of a machine that was used on location at Worlds of Fun. This is one of the, this is a chassis off one of those uh, monitors that I made a post about regarding, uh, I think so I got seven monitors from a guy in Kansas City and um, the first Hanrex Polo that was part of that lot uh, had nothing wrong with it. It worked right out of the gate when I plugged it in, it worked. All it needed was a rebuild, cap kit, um, reflow, things like that. So I didn't make a video on that one. That one's done. So we're we're one of seven. <laughs> this is two of seven. And we're going to try and get this one working uh, in succession with the rest of them. We'll do three, four, five, six, seven after this one, obviously. But So I turned this one on, and uh, the flyback was arcing like crazy. Uh, and I figured that was the case because look at what they did. This is something uh, just insane. They put this piece of plastic in here and shoved it in there on the ferrite core and they coated it with a bunch of hot glue and it's running all down here and I, I don't know what this plastic is supposed to be. It is snugly stuck in there. I mean, I can't even move it. Uh, but whatever their attempts were to try and get this working, uh, it, it was all in vain because it still arcs and as a matter of fact, you can see where it's melted a bit. This black plastic piece here is melted plastic from its arcing. So whatever they did, their attempt to try and fix this was not successful. But, I mean, <laughs> you've got this piece of plastic sitting in here. Uh, I, I can honestly say I've never seen any, anything like that before. Uh, so we're going to gonna have to yank this flyback out and get that replaced before really anything. However, um, I think I'm just going to go through and do an entire complete rebuild and then try and... I'm not going to just replace the flyback and then turn it on and see because there's no reason to. So uh, it's they might as well just do the full rebuild and everything and uh, fire it up after all that. But this thing is just super dirty. Super, super dirty. So I'm going to have to <clears throat> run this through the, uh, the cleaning process in the sink because this is just covered in who knows what. It's just absolutely filthy. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to get this all torn down, get the metal case off of here, off the top and the bottom, uh, and then go take this into the sink and do a deep clean on it because it is just filthy, filthy, filthy. Look at that. <laughs> That's just, wow. So that may be the next step here is we're going to get this nice and clean. That way we have a clean surface to work with. Uh, I don't, what the, what the heck's down there? Is that more glue? No, let's... What is that? What? What the hell is that? Oh, I know what that is. That's just a piece of tape. Okay. Yeah, um... Nasty and dirty. This is a very early version because it doesn't have all the text here that normal Polo has. There's a bunch of extra text here on this sticker. I think this is a very early version of the Polo. Uh, but there's a... Hmm, well, in stark contrast, the bottom is super clean. <laughs> this is, holy cow, this is one of the cleanest uh, Polos I've ever seen on the bottom. Wow. All right, so the way this works is that there's a metal plate on the bottom. You take these two screws out here, this one and this one, and then this top panel comes off because it's slotted into some, uh, I don't know, some holders. And then the bottom here, I think you have to desolder. Um, yeah, there's... Uh, let me see if I can describe it here. So, yeah, I have to take the bottom piece off first, but there's, like this here, this this little deal right here is a holder that piece right there and that piece corresponds to this right here 
so I should be able to just lift this out of here like that see kaboom and this one over here should be the same yep and then we just take the screws out And both of these pieces should come right off. By the way, this is the hole to adjust your B+. So if you have to adjust B+, you can do it without taking the cover off. But this should just lift off of here. If I'm not... Does, one of these, one of these I, I swear you have to desolder. Yeah, that could be the cage there. But this one should just come off here. Why are you not? Nothing is ever easy. There we go. There you have it. Now, oh no, you don't desolder it. There's these tabs that are twisted. You have to untwist them. You have to untwist these tabs. Then you should be able to remove that. There's one and there's the other. Okay. Now we have our covers out of the way. Oh, look at this. Just, this is all stuff that fell off of this thing. We're going to have to clean this. Man, it's gross. And I, I do notice here that. Uh, We've got some bulging filter caps, but that's not that's normal for these caps. So this this is not inherently indicative of failing filter caps. You can see that they're bulging up there a bit. That's not necessarily an indication of them being bad. That's that's somewhat common for that to happen. So I'm not going to really worry about changing the filter caps unless I have some on hand. If I have some on hand, I'll use them. But if I don't, I'm not going to worry about changing the filter caps. But this is just this is gross under here. Look at this. Yeah, we're going to have to do a little uh, bathing. So, that's what we'll do. I'm going to run this through the sink and the cleaning process with a little Simple Green and very hot water. And, uh, and we'll get some compressed air and blow it all off and let it sit while we're working on it. And give it about uh, 24 hours to dry and then we'll come back tomorrow and finish it up. Uh, you don't have to wait 24 hours. I mean, if you get a really good compressed air blowout, you can probably be okay. But I like to be safe, to, better safe than sorry, and I don't have anything else to do. So we're going to do a full cleaning on it, and then let it sit for overnight, and then tomorrow we'll come back and finish up the work. So, all right, so here it is, all dirty. And when I come back, uh, i got to put my stuff away here. That goes up there, that goes up there. All right, I mean, even the remote board is filthy. Yikes. So, yeah. Uh, here it is, all dirty. And I can't quite. You got. So, I can't quite get, get it all in a frame here with the neck board, but anyway. So, yeah. Jeez. So, here it is, all dirty. When I come back, I will uh, have it all clean. So, through the magic of editing, one, two, three. There you go. Nice and clean all around. Uh, we got the neck board all clean and the main board to boot. Much, much, much better. We have a nice clean working surface to, uh, to work with now. So, I think we, what we want to do, now let's zoom in here, I'll show you much much better now uh, still little remnants of uh, the water where it dried uh, some alcohol can hit that that's no problem 
but just absolutely better than it was. So night and day, night and day. Yeah, so uh, not 100% perfect. Some glue or something in there. Uh, but so much better than it was. It's just so much easier and, and nicer and better to have a clean work surface to, to work with when you're doing all these caps and rework and stuff like that. So, yeah, nice and clean now. Much better than it was. So I think what I'm going to do is replace the flyback and then test it. Because I, I think I mentioned before there's not really a reason to do that. But I want to know if there was a symptom. I want to know, A, if uh, changing the flyback is all it will need to make it operate. And if it does, I want to know what's wrong with it because that way we know if uh, what the after we do the work. Let's say we do the cap kit, we do the reflow, and there's something wrong with it. Did we cause that, or was that an original problem that didn't get fixed? So I want to replace the flyback, turn it on, see what it does. If there's an issue, we can do the cap kit, the reflow, all the inspection and stuff, and then test it afterward. And if that problem is fixed, we'll know that we have fixed it. Or if it's still there, we'll know that it was there before. So I think I want to do that on this particular case. So I'm going to replace the flyback, and then we will hook it up and see what it does. Uh, I haven't really even done an inspection on anything to see if there's anything cracked or broken. I probably should. Uh especially everything over here in the power supply section gets pretty hot and the solder joints can crack and cause all kinds of issues it it actually looks okay looking at it here right now as a cursory look over everything looks like it's okay I don't see any major cracked joints or issues or anything actually it's not too bad so let's just replace the flyback and uh, turn it on, see what it does. Uh, I don't think... I have one here that I removed from a donor chassis that I know was working. Uh, it's a bit dirty also. I took this off of a working chassis. So I may have to put that one in there because I don't think I have a brand new one. So uh, let me look through my stash and see if I can find... I have a cap kit here, of course, on hand. I'll set that aside. but. Uh, let me see, look through my stash if I actually have a brand new one. I think I used my last brand new one on the one I mentioned before, that uh, the, the one of seven that had no issues. Uh, I think I used my brand new flyback on that one because I wanted to have a polo that I knew would be reliable with all new parts. Uh, so I think I may have used my last new one on that one. So let me look through and see if I can find another new one. If not, I'll have to use this... Uh, this one here I took off the previous chassis, the one of seven that was working, so we can get this one up and going. Uh, so give me, a, give, me, give me a minute here, let me, let me cut away, I'm going to go see if I can find a new one. If not, we'll use this one, and then I'll come right back and we'll change it out. Well, that's a negative. I do not have a brand new one. I used the last brand new one I had on the previous one to this, so we'll have to use the flyback I robbed from that one, which I know is working. So, uh, not a big deal. At least we can get this up and running, and I'll have to change the flyback out maybe, possibly later. But for now, let's get this screw out of here, and we'll save it, and we'll reuse it for the other one. Set that aside. And first things first, let's try and get these wires out of the neck board. Now, the G2 wire is going to be easy, because we can just desolder that one from here. Yoink! And then it routes through this uh, relief hole. And there's that. Um, the only thing left now is this focus wire. And I don't know how to get this focus wire out of here. There's no uh, release. There's no release pin on this. Like normally, there's a a pin. You push the pin down with like a paper clip, and you take you can take that right out. But there's no uh, release pin on this set up. I'm not sure how that is supposed to come out of there quite honestly. Is it a, a one and done type of thing or... Uh, yeah, it doesn't just yank out of there. Well... Hmm... Oh, the, we got a bad solder here on the the holder. 
There's a correct solder joint for the holder, but. The color pot itself is okay. Or, I'm sorry, the color transistor itself is okay. Well, not a big deal. I'm oh, sorry. Squirrel got sidetracked. <laughs> uh, I guess what we'll have to do is cut it and splice it, because, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't see any way for that to come out of there. There's no... Uh, if there's a specific way... I don't see it. Well, okay, I guess what we'll have to do here is just, uh, let's go right here, and yoink. That should free up our flyback and get it out of here. All right, now you want to be careful when you're working on this chassis because uh, these are just actual wires. This ribbon cable are, you know, uh, threaded twisted wires and if you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth they can break internally in the connectors. So you want to kind of be cognizant when you're flipping this around and flipping it around upside down doing the cap kit. Uh, make sure that you don't have a lot of free movement on these joints because they'll just the wires can break off and you'll, you'll be chasing your uh, tail trying to figure it out. Um, I like to usually just kind of zip tie this off to the frame here. That way it has a little bit more of a strain relief but uh, we'll get to that when the time comes, but for now, let's get this flyback out of here. And... Let's zoom in a bit. Alright. Now, I like to use the soldering iron to heat these pads up because the surface area of the desoldering gun is pretty minimal doesn't transfer heat very well so I like to use the soldering iron to get the, the spot hot and then just I mean it's just it's just that simple it works a lot better Let's zoom in a bit closer here there you go Look at that! Huh. That one's cracked. Right there. Uh, hold on. Uh, well, I lost my... Uh, there they are. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Right there. Look at that. Crack City. So that wouldn't have worked really anyway. Even if the flyback wasn't uh, arcing. Hmm. Alright. And there's one more. Well, the ground is cracked too. The ground point is cracked as well. I guess it's hard for you to see, but uh, it's cracked too. Yeah, there you go. Huh. Well, yeah, that's why inspection is important. That's why inspection and reflow is important. You can't just get a you can't just get a chassis and do a cap kit and expect it to just work right out of the gate. I mean, it, it might, but. <laughs> Inspection and reflow is just as important as capping and all that other stuff. And there's one more ground point right there, but it looks like it's already cracked and missing solder, so this should probably just come right out now. Yeah, there you go. Uh. All right, well, there it is. Oh, wow, I just noticed this too. This resistor's, this resistor's loose, and if we look at the solder joint, it's, uh, 
is flopping around in the breeze too. So we did find at least one issue there. So that's again, that's why inspection and reflow is absolutely important. So I didn't I didn't see that with my naked eye, but I noticed it when I was picking this up and it wobbled a bit. So well there you have it. Uh, I may save this for the the, the wall of shame. <laughs> I don't have a wall of shame, I'm just kidding, but man, somebody tried desperately to fix this when all they had to do was just replace it. Oh, and they used a hacked up, uh, let's say, to start um, credit uh, marquee, if you will. Wow. Hmm. Okay, well, let's take this and just throw it in the garbage. One, two, three. There it goes. Here's our replacement. Uh, so let's get this in there. Some other parts and pieces laying around in here still. Okay, this should just fall right in. As it does. Let's put our screw in, just keep it in place. Okay, so there's that. Now let's solder this puppy in here. Flintstones, meet the Flintstones, they're the modern Stonehenge family. From the town of Bedrock, they're a page right out of history. When you're with the Flintstones, have a yabba dabba do time, a dabba do time, we'll have a gray old time. I said gray on purpose. I don't want to get a, a strike of some kind. Alright, that's going to be good enough. We'll have to clean it up later. There's no reason to uh, clean it up now because we're going to get covered in flux when we do our cap kit. And let's reflow this resistor leg here. And anything else in this power supply section? Let's just hit a few more things just for security. It all looks okay. But looks can be deceiving. I think that'll be okay. Okay, let's get our G2 wire reinstalled. Gotta go through the strain relief hole. There's two of them, you can go through either one of them. Now 
we need to do is strip off the, this here. Don't need much, and then we'll see. This came off of a different socket that was able to be desoldered. So we'll cut off about the same amount here, roughly there. And strip this one. Grab some heat shrink. That's all too big. Where's the smaller set? Have I used it all? Nope. Okay, here we go. We're going to take this one and cut it in half. I'm going to slide this over there, and this over there, and we will solder these points together. Just like so. And we'll slide our heat shrink over this. Shrink that down. And we'll slide the other one over if I can make it over. Shrink this one down, and there we go. All right. So I think uh, we are ready to test it now. So uh, what I want to do, we're going to leave the cages off. There's no reason to put the cages back on. Let's plug our remote board back in. Okay. Alright, so like I say, I, I want to know if there's an issue prior. That way if we do all the work and it's still there, we know that it wasn't resolved from what the work we did. Or I want to know if it works right out of the gate. That way if we do the cap kit and the rework and everything and then there's a problem afterward, it's something that I did. So that's, what, that's the whole purpose of this. So let me get a tube, or the tube this came off of, hook it back up, power it up and see if it works uh, the way that it is. It may have only had a couple of bad solder joints and a bad uh, flyback. So hopefully that's it. Um, so I, all right, I'm going to cut away, come back, we'll have it set up on the tube, and we'll test it and see what it does before any of the work. Okay, uh, we got our test pattern generator hooked up, remote board, uh, anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, and already mentioned remote. So there's our seven. So let's see if it even works now after changing the flyback, reflowing those solder joints in the power supply section. And kind of go from there. Um, all right, so here we go. One, two, oh, there we go. One, two, three. Okay, it took a long time to come on. That's not normal. It does come on. I heard high voltage. Do we have any kind of picture? Oh, crap. <laughs> well, oh, hey. Whoa, Nelly! We got smoke. We got smoke. And we have a cap that just exploded. That guy right there opened up its top. Why did that happen? Yikes. Well, the smoke cleared out pretty good, but that pop was that cap? Hmm. I don't want to put a new cap in and have it blow up again. But uh, that cap.
cap could have already been bad from the flyback arcing. So, wow, okay. Um, well, I guess uh, now that we know what was wrong with it, it, it uh, started out collapsed and, and got uncollapsed slightly, and then the cap exploded. <laughs> so, I guess what we'll do is we'll do a uh, full reflow, full cap kit, uh, normal work, um, everything that needs inspected, done, and tested, and then we'll try again. Hopefully the new cap doesn't explode and I don't find anything else. So let me get this back off the tube, get the camera back on the overhead, and uh, let's go over some of the key components of the Polo here uh, with the HOT, where it's at, uh, voltage regulator, some of the uh, couple of resistors that are common to go bad and cause issues. So let's talk about all that, then I'll get all the work done and we'll go from there. So stand by here one moment. All right, so here it is back off of the tube and I went ahead and removed the cap that exploded. And we can clearly see that uh, it has lost its top there. <laughs> wow, kaboom. Um, 250 volt 4.7 there's I think there's three or four of these on the chassis this rating but if we look at I think my theory might be correct I think the flyback arcing is what killed it and it was out of uh, spec and that's that's why it had the collapse then it started to get better and better as the cap charged up uh, and then it finally popped its top but I think it was the flyback arcing that killed it because if we look here's where that cap is located and it's on the same trace as an output, the ground output of the flyback. So I think that they're, I think the flyback arcing to the frame is what took this out because it's, it's attached to ground, straight to ground. So I think that might be uh, just a bad cap that caused that to happen. I'm crossing fingers here, hopefully. So what we're going to do here is let's talk a few minutes about some of the components here. Uh, the HOT is right here, this BU508 Alpha. That's your HOT. This guy right there, that's the camera to focus. BU508 Alpha, that's the HOT. Uh, and you got voltage regulators over here attached to this heat sink. Um, this is your built in isolation transformer. The Henrex Polo does not require uh, an external isolation transformer because it has one built in and it's right there. So, yep, uh, B plus adjustments right here, and it needs to be set to 138. And you test it right here at TP6. If I zoom in here, TP6. So your positive lead goes right here on this jumper, P112. Right there at TP6 is positive jumper. Negative goes to the frame or wherever you want to touch. And you want to adjust to 138 volts DC at this pot right there. So, yeah, uh, that's the basics of it. Now, a couple components that are known to go bad are these two resistors right here. If you have collapse, uh, usually sometimes one of these two resistors are bad. And it's, this one's actually in good, these are in good shape here. Uh, but a lot of times you'll see this resistor in this whole area kind of blackened. And that's because of uh, heat and operation over time. Uh, and then when these resistors go out, they kind of burn up the whole pad here on, on both sides. But this one's in really good shape. This one is uh, slightly blackened, but that's from heat as well. So if you ever see one of these two burned up, uh, chances are that's the cause of your collapse. So as a matter of fact, since we had collapse, I don't think the resistors are bad because we had collapse and it got better and then when the cap finally blew out that's what uh, killed it but um, I think these resistors are actually okay but let's test them anyway because they're not uh, burned up I think one of them should be about 100 and 160 ohms give or take I think this one should be around 160 if I'm not mistaken uh, 150 good and this one is 2.8 that's normal so all right uh, I think what we'll do is let's just go ahead and do our cap kit and our reflow and our inspection and then we'll test it again. That's about all I can do at the moment because uh, I'm 99.9% I'm .9 positive that this cap blew up because of the arcing flyback. So it just, I mean, it, I, I, there's not really, I think this was just dry as a bone because I, I've held many caps in my hand over the years and this just feels like it's lighter than air. There's nothing to it. I think all of the fluid electrolytic stuff inside just dried up and that's why this uh, lost its uh, lost its top. So I think we just have a, a situation of bad caps caused by a arcing flyback. At least this one anyway. So let's do all the rework and we'll come back and we'll see uh, what it does. And let's uh, do some magic here. I've got some marks. All right. Okay, uh, let me do all the work. 
I'll come back and we'll have this done. Through the magic of editing. One, two, three. Ta-da! All done. So full cap kit, full reflow, full inspection, everything passes. I didn't notice any other issues with any solder joints or dry joints or something cracked. Everything looked okay. I did also forget to mention before that it's important to check these two resistors here because these two resistors will develop cracked solder joints quite easily and quite often. Um, so you want to verify these two resistors have good solder joints. Uh, but yeah, everything turned out fantastic. It's nice and clean, brand new caps, everything has been reflowed. Uh, I didn't know, I'm not worried about the filter caps. Uh, those usually don't go bad. Even if you see them bulging slightly, that's normal. Um, but yeah, everything is good to go. Uh, all the reflow work has been accomplished. So yeah, even the neck board, got it all resolved. All of the color transistors reflowed, all the caps changed out. Nice and clean, put the cover back on the back, and we're ready to test it again. Um, yeah, I'll show all the old caps over here once I get the chassis back on the tube. Uh, even we still have our bad exploded cap here, so that's sitting off to the side. Um, yeah, and then we have the remote board has a cap that gets changed out as well. This guy right here, 250 volt, 1 microfarad. So, uh, I'm not going to put the cage back on just yet because we're going to need to check and verify and adjust our B+. So, um, that's about it. Let's get it back on the tube and turn it on and see if it works this time. Alright, all hooked back up. Uh, anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, remote. I always say that every time. That way it helps me be reassured and you guys reassured that when you do stuff like this, you don't forget to hook anything up. So let's turn our test pattern generator on. Uh, we are set up to read B+, just in case it does work. We can verify that we're set to uh, 138. And I realize now I forgot to mark this cap is being changed here. Let's go that way and that way. All right. Uh, yeah, we're set up on our test point six right there. And we want to make sure we're at 138, and I got the driver ready here at the at the ready to adjust the pot. So let's see if we uh, have success here. I need to shut my light off so we can see the tube. Uh, we're looking to make sure that our cap doesn't explode, <laughs> and we don't have collapse, and uh, we have 138. So let's turn it on, make sure it works, make sure we're close to 138. Then we'll monitor this cap, make sure it doesn't start bulging. I'll make sure we don't have collapse, and hopefully it works here. So, let's see. One, two, three. One oh, one oh eight. Ooh, that's not good. Hmm. <laughs> one oh eight. Um. Let's adjust this just slightly here, and of course it's this pot right. There, let's turn it that way slightly and see what it is here now. 141, okay. So we had a pot that was a bit dirty. Let's go back the other way a bit, okay. 129, 130. This pot is very touchy. That's close enough for testing 140. And. Oh, look! Uh, vertical frequency. I need to pull this pin out and put it in this one. And. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! All right. Uh, so, my theory was correct. The faulty flyback. Uh, just nuked that uh, cap. As a matter of fact, here are all the old caps. And there's the one that you see sitting crooked. <laughs> That's the one that, yeah, it was just all the electrical light inside of there just pretty much baked away, I'll bet. Uh, but hey, look at that. Fantastic. I uh, just need some adjustments. And look at that. 137.3. It's supposed to be 138. That's close enough. Can't ask for something better than that. Uh, well, you know, I guess you could. It could be 138, but uh, that's close enough. Not going to mess with that, so we're good there. All right, let's get the camera on the tripod, make some adjustments, and uh, see if we can tweak this to make it look pretty good here. So, one moment. All right, so let's start with uh, 
you know what, let me get the, this off of here so we don't cause damage. Alright, so we're going to have to do some tweaking here with moving these, these pins around uh, to adjust on the remote board. Okay, so let's do uh, contrast is way too high. Uh, let's start with contrast all the way down, brightness all the way down. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, it needs to be roughly there. And now we'll get contrast going. There we go. Man, these polos look good, I'm telling you. The RCA tubes have a much better dot pitch than the Zenith tubes on the Wells Gardner stuff. Um, H phase is position, so we'll set it roughly there. Uh, H amp is width, or I'm sorry, V amp is, is height. Okay, let's do um, H amp. Okay, H amp is width. We have width control right there is perfect. Um, vertical shift we'll put right about there. Um, vertical amp is going to be our size. We'll go roughly. Uh, we got some linearity problems that we have uh, our plate that plagued this uh, chassis like none other. And I'll show you what I mean momentarily. Okay, so there we have a full, good-looking image. We have all of our colors. Everything is honky dory. Okay, so let me tell you what I'm. I'll show you what I'm talking about with the uh, linearity. So let's scroll to this screen. Okay, so if you look at the bottom, see how the bottom squares are squished compared to the rest of them. As you come down here, uh, it's all pretty much even until you get to about right here and in the bottom, uh, the squares are squished. So there's an adjustment on here for vertical linearity. And let me show you where it's at. Got two turntables and a microphone. Vertical linearity is that adjustment right there. Uh, if it focuses, it probably won't. Right there. So that's where you adjust your vertical linearity. Now the linea vertical linearity will fix that problem. So. If we focus down here on these squares that are squished compared to the rest, and I turn that pot, watch what happens here. See that? See how these, these go unsquished and these go squished up here? So we want to have this roughly about right, right there, I'd say. Then we can reduce our vertical size and fix our phase here. Well, a little bit more. I think we need to tweak it slightly more. Um, I'd say probably there. Vertical shift. Yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get. All of these polos have our plague. You, Almost every polo you'll ever come across out in the wild is going to have this linearity issue. But it's about as good as you can make it. Right about there is pretty good. Um, yeah, I'll call that okay for now. We'll have to hook up an actual PCB and see, but that looks pretty darn good. Man, you couldn't ask for a better picture. It's just amazing. Let's try an actual PCB and see how that looks. I need to get it hooked up here, so I'm going to cut away, hook up a real PCB, and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so we got Rampage World Tour hooked up. Let's see how that looks on here. Well, as expected, because the test pattern generator is such a different resolution and uh, higher output. We'll need to adjust this here. Um, okay, H phase is position. And that looks pretty good right there. Vertical amp is height. Okay. Looking pretty darn good so far. Of course, we need to do some degaussing, but 
Uh, the colors are way off. We're way too red. Okay, vertical amp needs to go up. Or vertical uh, phase, I should say. And vertical size needs to be... Oh, wow, I'm way wrong there. Right there and right about there. Well, there you go. Wow. Okay, let's turn brightness up slightly. Brightness needs to be... Oh, that's contrast, I'm sorry. Brightness, roughly there. Man, you can't ask for a better image. We're a bit too red, so let's turn red down slightly. Um, there we go. Nice, would you look at that? Amazing. Of course, it doesn't come through as good in the camera as in person, but it just really is pretty good here if we look just how uh, well let's actually i need to adjust focus slightly here hang on a second there we go i mean you can just see how sharp that is pretty pretty good i mean it's just amazing so the polos when when they're running and they have a good picture tube, it's just, the, the RCA tubes are much better than the Zenith tubes from the 7000s and such. But I gotta say, this is this turnout is fantastic. Really happy that I've got a, a good score like this. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting because this was actually on location in a machine at Worlds of Fun for who knows how long, and even after all that, it still looks this good. It just shows you what a good rebuild and a good reflow and quality parts and good adjustments and everything can get you when you've got uh, something like this on hand so okay um i think that about wraps it up not sure what else to go over i mean there wasn't really anything wrong with this so to speak it's kind of unfortunate because you know we didn't we didn't get to talk about you know troubleshooting uh, collapses or troubleshooting blowing hot's and things like that because uh i guess we got you can say we got lucky with this one uh, we didn't need to worry about any of that but uh, I'm sure something down the road will, or sometime down the road, we'll have one come across the bench that we will have to do all that with. So, if that's what you've been waiting for, we'll have to wait a little bit longer, and I apologize. But at least we got some uh, good information across this time, and we'll let this run, do a burn in, make sure it doesn't blow up again. But yeah, uh, bad. Uh, all that was wrong with this was bad caps caused by uh, bad flyback, and uh, just needed some reflow. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Lots more on the way. I appreciate it, and we'll see you then. Nope, sorry, a little postscript here is uh, as I was put, about to put this away, I realized I forgot to put the cages back on. So the plate on the bottom side is back installed and the cage over the power supply section is reinstalled. So I got all that done. I'm sure some of you are probably thinking, well, wait a minute, what about the cages? You forgot to put the cages back on. But I did, but I, as I was about to put this away and I saw them sitting over here, I'm like, oh, I got to put the cages back on. So those are all back on, uh, no worries, and it's still working great. So again, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more and we'll see you then.